Hello and welcome to my White Knights unboxing and swatching. I bought uh, those yesterday when I filmed this, so it will be probably a bit later when this video is going up. Anyway, um, yeah, I bought new watercolors and I want to try them out. Um, I thought maybe some of you don't have them and want to see how they look and what the box is like. So. Enjoy. Yeah, I think I'll just talk a bit about watercolors as I'm talking and unboxing and everything. There is a swatch sheet in there made of watercolor paper where I can try the paints on later. And a text in Russian which I cannot read. If, if there's anyone who understands this and maybe wants to translate. I have no clue what this says. Absolutely no idea. But yeah, um, thanks for the information, I guess. I'm gonna put this aside. And in here, um, this is, I think, the smallest set that you could get. Maybe there's an even smaller one, but there was a huge pen with what looked like 500 colors. But I figured I already have quite a large set of watercolors and I can mix them and this is fine for me and they were so cheap. I think I paid 20 bucks for it. Um, yeah, that's not a lot for watercolors. I think I'll just open them up if I manage to. Mm -hmm. Ooh, that's how it works. Ah! I'm losing them all. <laughs> no. Okay, I think I'll, I'll just put them back in here. Okay, time to unwrap them. I want to see what they look like under the package. So you have to pull them out in both directions. This one is cadmium lemon, a very, very light yellow cool tone. I think that's great for mixing. Ooh, oh, holy hell, those are really full. They go a bit overboard. They feel nice. I'm gonna smell them. Mm-hmm. Disgusting. Like paint should be. I probably shouldn't put it anywhere near my face considering what they put in those paints. But yeah. Whatever. Mistakes were made. Don't don't eat your watercolor paints by the way. It's not healthy. So this one was cadmium yellow medium. There's quite a lot of yellow, but you need different shades of yellow. I think having just one is a bit limiting. Try to have at least a cool and a warm tone. Makes everything so much easier. Yeah, same goes for reds and blues. I don't know what to think of the greens yet, because there's one emerald green and the other one is just called green. I mean, yeah, obviously it's green, but I don't know which pigment. Maybe I can find the number somewhere. I can put them in the description later, maybe, or somewhere on the screen, if I find them. Maybe there's a number. Oh yeah, the um, pigment numbers are on here, so I can check which one the green is. But first I want to unpack those little guys. If you haven't um, got any watercolors or maybe you have a pack at home but you never got around to try it. <coughs> Sorry, I think I could tell you a bit how to get started with them. Basically you don't need a lot of colors, you don't need a huge set 
like a 50 color set or something because you can mix almost any color you want to if you just use the right pigments but um, mixing takes a bit of practice it can be a bit annoying you if you make a mistake you, you might use up all your colors and it's easily it's easy to get discouraged especially when you just started and I know there's some people in the art community that said oh you're not a real artist if you can't mix five different shades of green with just your basic colors and I kind of hate that sort of talk because you know your art skills are not defined by how good you're at mixing colors if you have a nice style you can still have great paintings and you can learn the mixing later it's perfectly fine like you, you're not a bad artist if you can't mix colors very well so I would recommend if you are buying your first set go for a slightly cheaper one that has maybe not just three colors but I'd say maybe 10 or 15 so you can um, experiment a bit never get the super cheap one like the, the student grade they're usually very chalky but you don't have to invest in super duper expensive stuff either I think you can get pretty neat results even with medium quality paints it doesn't always have to be the superior paint but it's worth investing in decent quality paper never never use watercolor and printing paper you will see that soon enough because it buckles and it's way too thin and the color doesn't stay on it very well but yeah just a normal priced watercolor that's thick enough I'd say at least 200 grams maybe even more like 300 that would be a good start and then you will have very nice results I believe that even with some like two euro paints that I, I got somewhere in the art shop you could get some nice colors down even so uh, even though they're chalky and they might fall off again but if the paper is all right you will get a nice painting that's that's a fact if, if you have very expensive colors and crap paper it won't look good even though the colors are good yeah so those are the paints and I'm gonna put them back in a box and swatch them now. I want to know what they look like on paper. And the, the yellow is a bit staining my fingers, but that doesn't matter. So here's the card. I believe that's White Knight in Russian. I hope so. I probably look like an idiot to anyone who can read this, but yeah, help me translate it. <sighs> yeah, do the swatching. Try the cadmium lemon. It's super saturated, which I love. There's nothing more annoying than having 90% binder in a color. Look at this, it's so bright and shiny and everything. <sighs> this is another yellow. Um, yeah, another thing when you're mixing colors, you can either spend a long time experimenting and getting frustrated, but what I would suggest is watch a YouTube video on color theory and how to mix watercolors, how to mix gouache paints. You will learn it very quickly. There's a few basics and once you understand them, it is super easy. Um, 
yeah, you will get satisfied with a few colors. Although I must say, having the perfect pigment for maybe a background or uh, a shirt of a character you're drawing can be so great. Like, of course you can mix any color, but if you have this one color in a pan or a tube that you love so much, it can be a beautiful thing. For me that's cerulean blue or sap green. I, I could mix colors for trees, but nothing will ever be as pretty as sap green. It's one of my favorite colors. This is a very light red. I don't know exactly what it is, but I think I'll write down the at least the pigment numbers later, maybe not the colors themselves, the names. <coughs> Just wonder if there's anything else I could tell you about watercolors. I'm not an expert, I just started recently too. Um, as a kid I used to use more acrylic paints because they were available and cheap and I had like really the cheapest crappiest acrylic paints you can imagine but I enjoyed it you know you can you can still love art even though you don't have the bestest uh, materials around but it definitely helps. You can always upgrade later, I suppose. Um, yeah, about paint. Um, get some, get some good brushes. This is also important. Again, they they don't have to be overly expensive or super hyper artist grade, but. You shouldn't mix them if you use any other mediums. Don't use your um, your brush for acrylic paint or gouache because the particles in there get stuck in the brushes sooner or later and they mess up your watercolor paintings, which you do not want. It's not nice. Ooh. Hello green. It's funny, usually the, except for yellow maybe, but the pants always look a bit different when they're dry. When you put down the paint, you put such vibrant colors. Here you can see the green looks black, no matter if it's on the camera or in real life. It's, it's dark. So it's always useful to have a little swatch card with you. Or maybe if you have a medium that you use a lot, like a, a sketchbook or your favorite type of watercolor paper, make a swatch there so you know how the paint reacts to that paper. And also, you don't mix them up. I have a very large set somewhere, Winsor & Newton, and there is eight different kinds of blue in it and if I didn't swatch them I would never know which blue I'm using at the moment. In case you haven't noticed I quite like the color blue. Yeah. Especially this one. I think this might even be cerulean blue. I'm not sure. chose my favorite green this is definitely this here it's so planty naturey yeah and there's even two kinds of brown I love this set it's got everything I need it's even got black I mean I probably could do without black if I tried hard enough um, but anyone who followed my, uh, what was it called, Super Science Tune Challenge, I'm really into drawing black backgrounds and I don't want to mix black every time I have like an entire painting painted black except for a little bit. 
so oh my god this is so dense intense it's got a lot of pigment it's pigmented and it has a slightly coolish tone looks a bit blue bluish gray yeah those are my paints and i will put the names of the paints and the pigments in the description and somewhere on the screen i will decide it when i'm editing but i hope you i don't know may maybe you want to buy them i'm gonna make a painting and a proper review in some other videos but that's it for now and thanks for watching bye